Good morning everyone and uh, it's my birthday I'm 27 years old um, and I'm really happy because I booked the day off work it's a Monday I was going to do legs but I thought it's my birthday I'm not going to the gym um, I haven't been to the gym since last Monday because it, as you can tell I've got a cold uh, my voice is all horrible and I'm sniffly so I think going to the gym makes that worse but this video is going to cover um, some of my past. I want to talk about my story, uh, how I got colitis, uh, how I ended up with an ileostomy bag. And uh, the reason why I'm doing this is because some people who watch me obviously don't know my past. Um, there's people, family and friends who do, and there's people, family and friends who don't know the full story. I think if someone heard it they can take away uh, a lot um, I made a lot of mistakes I may have had a completely different life if I didn't do those mistakes would I change it? No I wouldn't because I like the life I have now I have a great job, I have a wonderful girlfriend and we're almost ready to buy a house you know you can't you can't ask fairer than that from life uh, but like I say some people out there who are quite young or even old who may find these symptoms or these issues when they're in hospital listen to my mistakes listen to my story and you may find in yourself a similar situation and you can take what you will from this story so without further ado let's travel back in time to when i was 16 years old when i got my first symptom um, a lot of these stories may be embarrassing, but I'm grown up enough to go sod it. <laughs> you know, this is this is an embarrassing place to have uh, problems. So, anyway, I'm 16 years old. Uh, I've just finished high school. It's the summer, so imagine a couple of months ago. It's uh, I think it was around mm, maybe May or June. Uh, I was out with my uh, closest friend Dave, we were on a bike ride. A bunch of the girls from high school and a couple of the lads, they were in a, a park called Daisy Nook. Now that's a huge woodland area and Dave and I, we live quite far away and obviously we didn't drive back then and we didn't want to get public transport because it sucks. Um, I was quite active. So we were on our bikes, on our push bikes. Um, we tried looking for the girls in Daisy Nook, couldn't find them, the place is too big, and then, I mean, this is before smartphones, you know, they couldn't video chat, they couldn't do much other than a quick, simple text message, so I found out that they'd gone back to a friend of theirs, uh, Holly's house, and so we went there. Now, I got my first symptom there, um, I needed to use the bathroom, like, the, it came on all of a sudden, all of a sudden I was just like, I, I, need, I, need, I, need, I need to poo. <laughs> I just I just do. Now, 16 year old lad thinking I'm gonna crap in a girl's house. Like and all the other girls are gonna be all the other people are there, it's like, you know, they'll remember that, that I'm gonna get, you know, like socially back then when you were younger it meant everything. Embarrassing things lasted forever. If you did something embarrassing, it was never forgotten about. It's so different now. Now it's just online forever. But anyway, so I had to go to the bathroom, and I did, um, but it wasn't, I didn't, I didn't poo. I went to the toilet, and I sat down, and I, you know, I had a look afterwards, after having a wipe, I have a look, because that's what blokes do, you have a, you have a look at what you've created in the basin. Um, and it wasn't a crap, it didn't smell, I was like, this is weird, like a one wipe, no, nothing on the two, what the, what the hell is this, what's this magic that I've created, thinking I've just crapped out some golden egg and made me millions of pounds, but no, it was like a, a see-through mucus, and I was like, that's gross, it reminded me, remember those alien things that you got for a couple of quid, and they, and they got in the eggs, and you could stick them to walls, it looked like that. It looked like I'd eaten one of those. And I don't remember eating one of those. But there it was. So I thought, well, I've looked out, really, because I went too long in the bathroom. They're probably not going to think that I've had a massive crap. It doesn't smell. I'm good. Flush. 
couple of quick uh, fresheners to hide whatever farts I did. And, and out I went and I forgot about it um, enough to think, you know, that wasn't a medical issue. That was just one of those weird, funny things. I told my friend Dave, he thought it was hilarious. Um, because anything to do with fast is hilarious, especially with tea. So that was my first symptom. Uh, now fast forward till I'm 17. So if you think the summers, I've gone through all of the summer, I've started college. I went to Ashton Sixth Form and in college I, I just picked, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I didn't know what I wanted to become an artist, a, a football ad a plumber, you know, I knew I could work on my hands well and my dad was a builder so I could just easily slip into that work but I thought I'll try the academic side of things you know, just to see what I thought of it but I had no real vision of what I wanted to become so I just did the subjects that I liked so I did a sports science, I did history because I actually got an A in history in UCSE in high school, I did um, I believe art and design it was called because I did I do love drawing I love painting and stuff and then I did uh, use of maths use of mathematics which I wasn't smart enough to do a proper mathematics A level this was kind of um kind of something to learn like spreadsheets and and, and things like that it was a it was a way to learn more about maths that could be useful in everyday life which I thought was a good idea. It actually turned into statistics because there wasn't enough use of maths people, there wasn't enough people doing statistics, so they brought it together and it became a bloody mess and I didn't continue it for very long. Anyway, talking about colitis, my symptoms were growing slowly, uh, so I'd lost a bit of weight during the summer just because I was very active, so I was quite trim. Uh, in college I found myself a new girlfriend. Um, uh, Sarah, she was lovely, still friends with her now, really, really nice person. And I started to eat more. Because I was going to the gym, I wanted to build up, I wanted to eat more, more, more. Um, and I think it's after Christmas, I started to get blood uh, when I went to the toilet. So this is a couple of months, and I, people have started to notice that I got bigger. And they're like, Joe, why are you getting bigger? You, you know, you had abs before, what are you doing? But I wanted to put, I wanted to get stronger, and I was, I was lifting more and stuff like that. So kind of what I'm doing right now. Um, and then all of a sudden, because of the blood and stuff, I was getting really bad pains in my stomach when I ate things, uh, my usual foods. Um, I didn't eat unhealthy. My mum was a really, was a great cook. Um, I've become quite a, a good cook if I do this all myself. Um, so I know. I know how to make a good balanced meal, I know how to make a good breakfast, breakfast, and I I was eating healthy, but it was just, you know, I, I started bleeding, and my weight was just going down, it steadily went up, and now it's going down, Now I'm thinking, is it because I'm just not eating enough, and I was losing my appetite, which is a big part of my personality, um, having a big appetite. I, I eat loads of food, it's what I'm, no, what I'm known for, um, but it was just going down and down, my girlfriend noticed, I think most people just thought, oh Joe's got sick of putting weight on, he's going back down for the summer or whatever, but I was not well, um, my symptoms at the time, I was bleeding, I had pain in my stomach, uh, and I had pain passing anything when I went to the toilet, sometimes I was okay, I think how it was, it was like basically I was having my first kind of flare up, um, but it progressively got worse. My girlfriend told me that, you know, when I told her I had some blood in my poo, well, not much. She was just like, oh, you can get that from being dehydrated and you can get it from other things. So I was thinking to myself, from her, I'm not blaming her, but from her words, I was like, I'm okay, you know, it's just, it's just the side effects of this, this and this. I probably ate something a bit too spicy or they, this food didn't agree with me, blah, blah, blah. Months have gone, another month or so have gone by um, and I was still getting these symptoms. Now my attendance for college dropped a lot. Uh, my work suffered, especially with uh, phys uh, sports science because I wasn't doing the actual uh, sporting side of it. I'd go to the lessons 
sometimes to do you know the written biology kind of thing but when it came to actually playing a sport or doing the training that they got you to do I wasn't really doing it I was coming up with excuses because I didn't want to tell them my genuine illness because it was embarrassing um, you know I was like I'm having a bit of blood in my poo and I'm having too difficulty digesting foods and sometimes I'm throwing up and you know it was I just kept thinking I've got it I've got a virus and then it kind of went away and then came back but I still didn't go to the doctor at this point like there's my number one mistake um, so one day I'd had enough I I wanted to feel what was going on because I had a real sharp pain when I sat down and when I uh, went for a vote for a crap basically so I felt and I felt like a little lump um, and I was like that's not that's not right that's really weird what the hell is that of all the things what is that um, so I, I said to my mum and I explained what I thought it was um, and she was like oh show me Joseph just show me no go away no I'm not just showing you my ass no and what what I mean why did I care so much I mean it's my mum she brought me up she she wiped my ass when I was a baby you know like she gave birth to me well you know why am I being such a blooming imbecile of not showing her intimate part of myself because really it doesn't matter someone who cares about you you should be able to do that but at the time I was a young man and I just think it was just so embarrassing uh, I was more probably why I didn't go to the to the doctors because I was embarrassed, which is just so stupid when I think about it now. Because now I'm I'm talking to a camera that's going to put a video up online and and anyone can watch it, so I can't be that embarrassed anymore. Um, so we spot, talk, talked for about half an hour or so, and finally I showed my mum. I was like lay on my side on my bed and showed her. It wasn't just like spread eagle in the middle of my bloody living room. <laughs> I, you know, discreetly showed her and she just said to me, it looks like a hemorrhoid. Uh, piles. It's like piles, that's what all people get. What, what the hell? And she told me a story of, uh, uh, sorry dad, how my dad got it once from lifting a really heavy weight. <laughs> he like lifted this massive piece of stone or something and he lifted it and then I popped an MRI out, <laughs> but I don't. So I was like, but I'm not lifting anything really, really heavy. I didn't go to the gym and squat like like 200 kilograms and pop out some grapes. <laughs> I didn't do that. So I was like, well, how did that happen? And she convinced me to go to my doctor. So probably the best moves. She was like, Joseph, you've got to go. I'll book you an appointment. You've got to go to the doctor. So. I did. I finally went to my doctor eventually after being months of symptoms, you know, blood and pain and loss of appetite, loss of weight. All of this happened in, you know, a quite a long period of time and I still didn't go see anybody. So when I did, I was so nervous and sat there and I went in and I explained my symptoms. Um, but the problem was I didn't explain the symptoms I just explained to you. Uh, what I explained to them is blood, uh, uncomfortable when I go to the toilet, and I feel like I fell a lump. So I only spoke of the immediate issue, which was the hemorrhoid. Now, the doctor had a, the first time this ever happened to me, put his finger inside my rectum to check it and how it is. And I just remember being just like, this is this is so embarrassing and uncomfortable and awful and painful it hurt but of course it hurt it was a swollen area with a hemorrhoid so after he examined me um, he just said it's a hemorrhoid 99% it's a hemorrhoid were the words he used I was bloody 1% so he gave me a prescription of little tablet things that you put in your bum like little like little basically just like little tablets and I wish that they were normal tablets I could swallow but no 
So what I had to do was go home and try to start using these, putting them uh, suppositories inside myself and it was, it was so uncomfortable. It was like having the doctor's finger in my ass all over again. I really wish that I didn't have to do it, but I did it. But my main problem was my body just kept firing them back out again. So I'd go through like two or three just to make sure that one was staying the way it was supposed to stay. And it was still really painful and I was still bleeding. And it just, it just seemed to make things worse. And because things were worse and because I didn't want to eat and because I was embarrassed and because I was all these things and my anxiety was going up. Some, anxiety wasn't even a word that I really knew back then. Um, I was just stressed out about it. I just couldn't be bothered going to college. I was so lazy and lethargic. And I believe it was about a week or so went by. Um, and my mum, and I was in bed, and I was just like, I'm not better. I didn't go to college for like two or three days. And my mum was like, I'm taking you to the hospital because what you've been given doesn't seem to work. You're getting worse. And my mum had noticed that I'd lost weight. Now, you won't really notice when someone's lost six pounds. But if someone's lost 20 pounds, you're gonna notice. Um, we didn't have a scale in the house. We only have a scale recently um, because my mum never really believed in them. Uh, not, not that they were a magical thing that you had to believe in, but she didn't use them, you know, for, for whatever reasons. So when we went to the hospital, uh, into the accident emergency, I don't really remember much because I, I was just in and out of consciousness, really. I was so exhausted from being just ill that I just kept going in and out and in and out. So the wait time was maybe two and a half hours didn't bother me, I could have waited five hours, I slept for most of it. So I've come a long way at this point, you know, I'm, I'm at hospital, I'm going to the toilet while I'm at hospital in the waiting room bleeding and stuff because it got so frequent. Um, and then finally I was taken in, they heard my symptoms, my dad turned up and then my dad and my mum kind of argued my dad was thinking he's in he's in college now, you know, he's being lazy and he's eating crap food. That's why he's here, it's his diet. We need to start you on this, this and this. So my dad was looking for solutions straight away. He came in and he was like, you're not eating right, this is what this has caused. And he had it in his mind that that's what it was. My mum was like, no, I see what he eats. He eats good food and I cook him good food. It's not that, there's something else. Uh, I don't live with my father um, and when he did see me on weekends and, and when I went round to his house and stuff, you know, it's not the same as living with someone, whereas my mum saw me all the time. Um, so the doctor came in and they didn't believe it was a dietary issue. They didn't know what it could have been. I had to be examined again, which was more painful than last time, but I was a chipper individual because things were being done. Um, I've always been told by doctors and hospitals that I'm a good patient because I'm quite happy and I'm quite, you know, I just do what I'm told and I don't complain. Um, and when I do complain, I'm very, very nice. Um, but anyway, I'm here, a and &E, just behind a and &E, being seen by the doctor, being assessed, got examined. Um, <laughs> then they took bloods and the bloods came back and my white cell count wasn't good. I definitely had something wrong with me, uh, very serious. So they rushed me to like an, um, a gastric ward. Um, the building is actually gone now, but that's where I was. And I just remember being there and thinking, shit, I'm in hospital. This is not good. And the, the early times of that hospital visit, I don't remember too much of because, um, you know, it, it was just sleeping a lot and worry and sleep. My symptoms were still there. Um, I ended up, I went to about six different wards um, in this first visit, or maybe, maybe less. I, I went to quite a few wards, um, but when I finally went to, I went to one when I was in on my own. This is what, actually this, yes, this is what I remember. After a and &E, I went to an in, a ward where I got assessed um, and then 
After my assessment, I went to a ward where I was completely on my own. Uh, there was no one else in there at all. Uh, it felt like I was in like an old people's living room. It was really weird. Then they transferred me to the ward next door. And the ward next door had, I think it's because they just didn't want me with elderly old people, some were dying and things like that. So I was in there and like, I remember Dave come and visit me uh, almost every day because the college is next to the hospital, like across the road. So he could just go to college and come over and cheer his mate up. Um, and I was in this, like, it literally had a big, massive old brownish TV. It had a carpet on the floor in a hospital ward. And it just had a bunch of elderly people. And one of them was so funny. He, he got out of his bed and he'd walk up and he'd go and get in this chair and he'd talk to himself to encourage himself to move. So he'd be like, come on, you old bastard, let's go, come on. As he's walking along with his walking sticks, he'd sit himself down, which took another two or three minutes. And then he'd watch a bit of TV. Me and Dave just sat there chatting and talking. You want to wear those original lads? Uh, no, uh, fine, thank you. Nil by mouth written above me, you know. <laughs> Um, I'm not allowed to eat anything. You want the sweet? No, no, fine, thanks. And then he gets up, and as he gets up, he's like, come on, you bastard, come on. And he's he's giving it everything just to get out of this chair. Like, come on, you old bastard. And he gets himself up. Then he gives us a look, gives us a wink, and goes back to his bed. And the, and the person next to him, um, started moaning for the nurse. Now this guy, I don't know what's wrong with him, but he was just moaning and moaning, nurse, 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 oh, help me, help me. If, which obviously a nurse should come and help them, but if they've been doing it like all day, like a nurse comes over, what's wrong with you? Nothing, and then they go away. You know, there's nothing wrong with them. They just want, I don't know, they panic, I don't know what's wrong with them. But the man next to him, the one who was like swearing himself, getting out of the chair, got his walking stick and it's him. <laughs> so he reaching across, he's like, shut up, shut up, shut up. Do, do, do. Oh, nurse, nurse. So as you can imagine, Dave and I have creased over laughing our heads off at this, thinking like, where have they sent me? Like, what, what, what have I done? <laughs> like, am I gonna turn into some crazy person and start hitting people with sticks? But, um. Oh, it was so funny. Like, I kind of enjoy being on the ward. Being on wards isn't bad because, like, a lot of the time, a lot of funny things happen. A lot of horrible things happen. But in this situation, it was quite funny. Um, as I was on this ward, I was... Um, I went for a colonoscopy, getting back to the medical side of things. Um, and a colonoscopy, they put a camera up inside your bum and they viewed all of my large intestine. Um, and they did that because they'd done a scan of my stomach. I believe they did, it wasn't, it may have been an x-ray, but they put like, so before the colonoscopy, I went for this and I put a piece of foam on my tummy and then this big massive machine that went all the way to the ceiling kind of came down like, like something out of, Alien or something, this huge machine came down and it touched my, my foam thing in my stomach and then it kind of moved and kind of scanned my stomach. I think it was just a really rudimentary like CT scan or something. Um, uh, and that was, that was done really quickly. I just remember going in and going, bloody hell, this my giant machine. I hope it's not going up my ass. Uh, luckily it didn't. So then I went for a colonoscopy a day or so afterwards. See, when you're in hospital and they do think something's wrong with you, the NHS works very, very quickly. Um, when you're seeing someone from outside the hospital, like I want, like, it takes forever to see like a gastric person, you're gonna see them in three months or something. So if you die and you get seen quick, so they knew something was really wrong with me. Uh, I really wasn't eating much and I was on anti-sickness and all sorts. So I went for my colonoscopy. Now, I've had them since, and the drugs that they give you don't affect me very much anymore. I believe it's because I've had so much um, 
pumped into me over the years, uh, well over that period of time. But I also believe it was down to weight. Now, if you're a bigger individual, um, uh, when they gave, like so, like now, uh, I'm bigger than I was then. The drugs don't affect me as much, but they give you something that makes you a bit, you know, wishy-washy, and you're not really supposed to drive afterwards. Not that I was going anywhere. I was stuck in hospital, but I weighed maybe around nine and a half, ten stone at the time. So I was really, really quite little. Um, because I'd lost so much weight uh, and it really kind of knocked me for six, this stuff. So I'm lying on my side, but it was so painful. I remember the nurse who held my hand. So I'm like lying on my side with my knees touching my chin and so they can get a good view. And she was holding my hand saying, you know, you're very brave, well done, you're very brave. And I'm just squinting and tensing my arms up as much as possible because as they put this camera up, it just every second of it hurt. And then I could remember seeing the screen, which had my obviously my insides. And I'm just looking at it going, that's awful. I just remember him moving it, and it's just red, bright, bright red, and just and the and it's like goo and, and it was just not nice at all. It was oh it was awful. And I was cleaned out because they give you um I know I'm doing this in the wrong order, but they give you these sachets before you go in, and it obviously clears you out of all of your um anything you've eaten in like your entire life is gone through you like everything but I hadn't eaten very much at this point because I couldn't eat very much at this point uh, I just it just hurt too much to pass it it was just so much pain I barely ate the food the terrible hospital food oh no I couldn't eat it <laughs> um, but I only had one of these sachets instead of two because I wouldn't have the other one I'm like no it was so painful um, having diarrhea was just awful. I don't, there's nothing in my system. I'm not eating, I'm not eating anything. So I'm no, I'm not having the other sachet. You're just gonna deal with it. So they accepted that. So anyway, so then I'm looking at my insides and it was just quite traumatizing um, and painful. Uh, but I was so in and out at the time, like so wishy-washy that it, it's hard to try and remember that right now it's it is you know it's 10 years ago it's not easy you know nine years ago um and afterwards they wheel you out or they wheeled me out because they wouldn't let me walk out i was too weak and just in not in a good way at all um but what i needed to do is i felt like i needed to go to the toilet i really needed to go to the toilet now if you're in this situation um and i hope you don't you're probably feeling it because you just need to fart and maybe some of the lubrication is, is around the area because they don't clean you up very well and you don't have the chance to clean yourself up very well um, because they wouldn't let me go to the toilet. They said that I wasn't allowed to stand um, because I might hurt myself. I wasn't allowed to go to the toilet on my own. And I was like, but I need to go to the toilet. And I, I love nurses and I think that, you know, they're amazing, they do a great job, but sometimes, sometimes they can be cold. Um, maybe they've had a rough day. They are human after all, and they're allowed to have a rough day, but one of them was quite cold with me. Um, and she just was like, I just kept saying, I just need to go to the toilet. And like, you, you know, she was like, you're going back to your ward soon. And she just kind of rolled her eyes and was like, all right, went and got a bedpan which was a metal at the time, then I don't believe they had them metal anymore, and she put it underneath my bum. So I'm lying there, and then you kind of put that under yourself. And it was cold, and I was so, I was, just remember being like, this is embarrassing and awful. Um, but I didn't even go to the toilet, so it was a whole waste of time, because I think kind of did, and I just trumped, and then that was it. So I was like, crap, you know, I've just, I've just annoyed this person and wasted my time and then put myself in a really awkward, like, not lying flat, you lie kind of like that, with this thing underneath you, and oh, it was just, I just put myself in a horrible situation after a horrible colostomy, I mean, um, colonoscopy. So I did not enjoy that one little bit. So uh, now they found out what was wrong with me, things really started to get moving. They gave me steroids, 
Um, and I was like, shit, I'm gonna get jacked. <laughs> I'm gonna get massive. But they're not the same type of uh, steroids. I believe it was called pregnisolone that they gave me. Um, and it reacted well with me. Um, and the symptoms abated enough for me to go home. Uh, I was in hospital at this point for 12 days and I was really happy to go home but uh, something I haven't mentioned is I was supposed to go to Rome with my history uh, group and it's something they did every year. My mum had paid for it and it happened while I was in hospital so I missed out on that. Um, which kind of bums me out still because I've, I've still not been to Rome but um, I was better and I was able to leave the hospital after 12 days I believe the first parts of it were mainly because it was over a weekend and I mean Alex was in for a similar amount of time before they figured out what was wrong with her so it seems it's quite generic that if you go in with the symptoms that we have if you have colitis, it's usually, in extreme cases, you know, when you have to go to hospital, um, you, you know, 12 days is, is kind of, two weeks is kind of how long you may be there for. But I was happy to get home. And the first things I did, I started going back to the gym. I started eating again, eating, eating and eating and eating. Uh, I had abs and stuff, because obviously I'd lost so much weight, you could see, you know, I was quite trim. Um, but when I started going to the gym, I really started to make some changes. The problems with being outside of um, the hospital is I'm not very organized, so I'd miss sometimes my tablets in the morning and have to take them in the, the afternoon or evening because at the time I couldn't go back to, I tried to go back to college, but um, they were a bit annoyed that I made, I know, I'd had two extra weeks off and I'd already missed a lot of time off because I was ill. So I was working with my dad as well at the weekends to get myself a little bit of pocket money because I didn't really have a job. So I was working with my dad labouring um, and you know I just kept taking my tablets when I could but my symptoms started coming back. Um, I was only out for maybe a week or two and they just as soon as I started to dwindle my steroids, because you're supposed to dwindle them, um, they started to, my symptoms really did start to come back. And I was really disheartened um, and upset, so I started to get, you know, I didn't want to eat as much, and I was losing weight again, and I was bleeding a lot again. And it went on for a couple of more weeks and I was just trying and trying and I got so angry and so frustrated that these tablets and things weren't working that I just stopped taking them. Which is probably the stupidest thing I ever did. Um, never ever do that. And I stopped taking them and I really got my symptoms back. I passed out waiting for the bathroom in my own house on the landing on the floor, didn't fall, I was just, I was sat on the stairs and I just kind of lay forward and was just like, this is comfortable and blackness, you know. Um, my mum took me back to a &E and I wasn't there for long. I just remember kind of being half in and out again, walking in and out of the bathroom, bleeding and stuff. And next thing I know, I'm in the emergency, not just the, the A&E emergency room, I went to a critical assessment unit um, which only had about six people in. Uh, it was a really nice brand new area of the hospital uh, and I was very 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 poorly. I could barely get up. All I'd do was get up and walk to the bathroom and then walk back um, and I was just like I may have done this to myself for not to taking my tablets. But really, you know, the, the symptoms were coming back anyway. I think I just sped it up by being a bit of a nonce. So I'm going to leave that there, guys. So we've gone from a couple of symptoms to seeing my doctor, to being in hospital, to being treated in hospital, to going home. I was home for maybe a month. And now I'm back in hospital again. And I'm not well. And 
I'm going to leave it there because it's already 35 minutes of video. So thank you for watching. Um, I'll catch you up on part two uh, and see how I get on in hospital again. Um, this is kind of, I always talk about it with people, but not the whole story. So thank you for watching and I'll catch you in part two when we cover my next uh, time in hospital. Uh, if you like the video, please like it and hopefully you can learn something from it and hopefully you can learn not to be as a big idiot as me. And also know that you are human and you can live through it. You can make it through it. Look at me, it's nine years ahead and I'm okay. So.